Hello everybody, Reggie Time here, and in just a moment we're going to be playing an hour or so session of Snap 25 NL, and you'll just be seeing the more interesting spots from that session. Um, who knows how many hands it'll be? Um, we're going to be doing this for the time being on Snap because they have just launched a 20-year promotion where they get where players get 20% rate back between today, today's date, and the end of the year so um we're gonna we're gonna see if that affects the pools in any way uh, it should do it should make pools la uh, larger should make them run longer um so yeah we're gonna we're gonna have a go at that rather than be on the party poker grind i prefer the triple eight software i think the games on triple eight are a little bit softer but i was playing on party because party had better rate back and the game quality wasn't that much difference so um we'll see we'll see how we get on um I'm mostly playing on the... I put myself on the night shift, so I'm not playing much during the day. I played until like 4 a.m., 5 a.m. last night, something like that. It's, as you can see by the clock now, it's just gone 12, so I've not been awake long. I've had a coffee, I've had a shite, I'm ready to go. Um, don't know how frequent these videos are going to be, because, um, as I said, I am putting myself back on the night shift. There's just way more EV in grinding from like 11 a.m. UK time to 5 a.m. There's way more EV in that, or at least not saying grinding all six hours every day, but there's more EV in grinding those hours than there is in having a more like normal person schedule and just sort of your grind being due in the daytime. When I'm a celebrity is finished, I'm probably going to have a schedule that looks something like grinding reg tables on iPoker from, I don't know, um, half seven, eight o'clock to 11 ish, then maybe a little bit of speed poker. And then go back on the on the graveyard shift and I poker from like one thirty a.m. through till maybe four a.m. or something like that. It's, it's the kind of schedule I've got in mind, but we'll see. So I don't know how much that's going to help me create content, but content's just something I do as a hobby, as a pastime. Uh, if I've got time to make it, uh, and I'm up at the appropriate times, I will. And if I don't, I won't. So if I do go away well for a little while, um, yeah, just it's just because. Because my schedule isn't really allowing for me to do this stuff. But let's get stuck into these games. Um, I'm not expecting much. I'm not expecting the games to be particularly soft. Um, but yeah, we'll give it a go and we'll see what happens. Uh, uh, someone who's, in my opinion, likely to be playing very tight ranges. When when three betting. Uh, again, he would be three bet really small. This guy's a reg and he's chosen an incredibly inappropriate three bet size. Out of position two. Um, again, probably with an incredibly narrow range. Um, he's got a re-steal range of 4%. Good for you, sir. And we've loved a pair. We're probably stone dead here, but we, his, his, this, his sizing is just so inappropriate. We have to continue. <clears throat> he now checks. Um... How often do we think this guy's going to bluff if we check back? We don't even want to check back, do we? We just want to, like, just put money in the pot. If he's got us beat, then good for him. He doesn't. We move along. Open the 10-8 suited here because this tenor scars in the pot and it's somebody I want to play pots with. Um, checking this flop probably with range out of position multi way certainly not intending folding it certainly not intending folding it versus one big blind and then a call the question is do we raise here or do we just take our pot odds and call yeah. really don't want to reopen the betting at this point If he bets small again, we may check raise this turn. Now, this total messes out of the way. I think we're going to try if we try a bit of a punt here. Always a bit more high variance against these super loose types. 
feels like a reasonable play and it works. Defended 8 9 on the button here against this like super shite nits open. We get dunked into from an unknown. We have a good shot on a backdoor flush draw. Turn a pair now, which is going to complicate things a little bit. This guy just has a queen. Um, that we can be pretty certain. So we think out 7 8. And nine are all clean outs here versus the says we just call. Uh, now he's just going to check. And we're going to win the pot. Oh, he doesn't check. That's interesting. Um, we're just all in. And I think he's going to fold. Seven toes. Okay, my read was very, very, very far off there. Didn't know that play from a hole in the wall. Just presumed he had a queen, and my I applied a population read, and um, the guy does not fit the population tendencies. Uh -uh. And a pretty disgraceful turn cat with the ace king. I expect to see some donks here. We don't get one. Um, just checking, obviously. Not in love with calling rivers. Probably have to though, because he could value a bit worse. And worse king x. He's about pretty big. But this guy, this is the start I have here. It's a small sample sword. I'm not in love with using it. That like he's got 67% river aggression frequency, just two out of three. He's only he's only won once, so twice when he's bet the river. I mean, we just have to call here and lose a lot, I guess. Yep. Okay. Ooh. Someone's had a cheeky little three bet. I mean, it's highly inappropriately sized, but they've had a three bet at least. And he calls the four bet. We get a thoroughly disappointing flop because unless he has pocket kings, we could be fucked. Um, This guy bet much versus Miss C bets. Or are we just going to let barrel off here? I don't know. We don't know. Uh, I guess we just bet and not fold. And just hope he doesn't have a set. He calls so quickly there. We could be fucked here. But I mean, we're all in. What are we going to do about it? We're just all in. Logged in for an hour. He had the ace queen. Happy days. We win a stack. We win a stack. Uh, what do we want to do against this dude here? Donk flop. Check turn. Bet river. Uh, I think this probably should be a fold, but I'm feeling generous after the ace's hand. Yep, should have been a fold. <laughs> Dogs, two pair, check sport. Bed's river. Naughty Reggie. That was just a fold. <coughs> Never mind. The guy doesn't attack Miss Seabets, so we're not going to check to him.
see a tech Mr. Turnbit. Not massively. Um, particularly what I give a free card. And I think we just have a check on this river. Maybe a very sad payoff. I think he's, he should surely have some bluffs in this spot. Surely he should have some bluffs. You what, mate? You what? Hasn't bet once versus the Miss Seabet on the river. He's won 80% of the time when he's bet the river. Just not paying you off. Just not, no, oh, now my auto reload doesn't fucking work. Just not paying these dudes off. I mean, he may well have bluffed me there. Um, I just don't care. We haven't put enough money in there for me to want to call whatever that was. Two and a half X pot versus someone who is basically just a massive nit. Just not doing it. Just not doing it. Pair and a flush draw, multi way. How exciting. Um. Checking. Guy probes turn just 28% of the time. Um, we're very likely going to need to hit here to win this pot. And hit we do. Oh dear, the guy's got pocket sixes, hasn't he? The dude's got pocket sixes. I mean, we can't fold. We folded the queens. We can't fold this one. I'm afraid this time he's just got us. What? You what, mate? Quite remarkable. Quite remarkable. Dude's got a 28% probe. Or whatever it was. It's multi-way. He's got no equity if he's called. Um... Yeah, I don't really know what to say about that. Maybe we're oh well, I guess we go broke against this dude now. Well, not go broke, but you know what I mean? It's far extra under the gun, which is usually quite scary. Uh, and he's drawing close to dead. And the guys see but once out of 43 hands. Four bet, sorry. Queen's in the muck. Not bothered. Refuse to give action to people like that. Just absolutely refuse. So here we are now getting into the holder manager section of the video. Uh, that session, we played 23-20, three bet on the lower side, but um, if you like looked at the HUD stats in the hands that we reviewed, you would see why the three bet's so low, it's because no cunt's opening. Um, had to have a pretty high three bet frequency when you know, you're playing against people who aren't opening grown-up ranges. 
Um, so, yeah, pretty happy with the session. It was boring, don't get me wrong. I mean, we played for an hour or so there, and if it wasn't for, like, the last 20 minutes of the session where we got some where we got some action, it would have been the most tedious session I've had in a while. But um, that's just the way it is. Really happy with how the month's going. You've seen all this before, but we've now made over $1,000 before rate back, which is really, really pleasing. And I guess... For, I just want to talk a little bit about um, the way I've been playing lately and that my poker journey uh, over the last few months. Back in the middle of June, towards the end of June, some of you who watch the channel already know this, I had a long chat with um, my very good e-friend, Jusenberg, who basically ripped me a new ass for two and a half to three hours for being way too fucking nitty in certain spots and he was right and it was a it was a conversation that needed to be had that inspired me to go ahead and um mostly work on my pre-flop radius like remodel them not totally remodel them of course because you know it wasn't like i was doing loads wrong i just wasn't stealing enough i wasn't three betting enough there's little bits and bobs so i did quite a lot of work um with Preflop Wizard, uh, sorry, Preflop Wizard, GTO Wizard, just for their preflop solutions, just to get my head around some of the stuff that I wasn't doing that I should have been doing. And then that led me into a few spots um, in like July, August, September time where I was overplaying in some spots um, and we had some kind of like pretty high variance results. So it was pretty swingy for a while. I just wasn't very good at folding. I was bluffing too often. Um, all those types of things. Um, and now we've got to a, I get to a really nice spot where I'm combining like the solved ranges pre-flop, but then adjusting them for the player pool that I'm in. And we've talked about this before in terms of like, you know, like, I'm not going to use GTO Wizards fucking three bet, button three bet percentages against people who aren't opening wide enough. So if someone's opening the cutoff but they're only opening fucking 18% of hands on the cutoff. I'm not going to three bet full button range. I'm going to kind of three bet somewhere between the, the, the range, the, the three bets somewhere between like middle position and hijack or early position hijack, however you want to, however you want to word it. Um, and just like small subtle adjustments based on the opponent types I'm up against. And then, and then post flop, I've just been, especially in the last like this month where I, th where I think it's gone really good, I've just been egregiously nitty against people who just do not find anywhere near enough bluffs. So we, we saw that with the queen queen hand, uh, which I'm sure most of you would have been like, yeah, I just call, you know, flush draws have missed, gut shots have missed, open enders have missed, you know, we just can't fold this hand, blah, 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 to that. And, you know, theoretically, that's correct. That's, theoretically, that is an atrocious fold, an absolutely atrocious fold. But I think in practice in these games, it's whatever, it is what it is, you know, fine. Sometimes I'm going to get bluffed there. Sometimes I'm going to, like, you know, he's going to value bet pocket jacks or whatever, or pocket tens, thinking the good, and um, I'm going to fold the winner. I really, really don't care. I've, I'm trying to focus really hard this month on on blue line and, and that, that being where I, I, I make my money from. And as you can see, it's gone really well. Am I exploitable? Fucking damn right I am. Uh, will you be able to exploit me if if you if you have like the kind of stats when I if you're the, play, the type of player who who produces the kind of stats that I overfold to? Yes, you can. If you know you're up against me, um, and you decide to do things you wouldn't typically do versus population, damn fucking right you're going to exploit me. Um, without question, if you're a good reg with good stats then no, probably not, because I'm not going to be taking the same lines against you. I'm not going to be making the same decisions against you. So I, against the pocket, the pocket queens there, for example, if I was up against like a pretty decent reg with pretty aggro stats, I would have taken the same line and I would have um, just called the river, flicked it in, whatever, and if we lose, we lose. Um, you deserve the action. You're a, you're a decent reg. You're aggressive. You deserve the action. If you're playing like 18 14, um, and right, really passive down the streets post but you're not getting action. Simple as that. You're just not getting it. And if you, you know, decide you want to like exploit me for that, 
then you find you go for it, you know, and eventually I'll twig on and it will stop, your exploit will stop working. But, the, you know, generally population just aren't doing that and I'm just not getting involved in paying these cunts off. They don't deserve to be paid off. They sat there, they played 18, 14, 16, 13 with a 3 or a 4% 3 bet. Like that other one when we had the Queen's Prix, we folded to that infidae guys, 4 bet. Fuck off, mate, you're not getting the action. You know, you're 4 bet once in 43 fucking instances. Um, you're just a massive, massive nate fine. You know, sometimes you get to fall bit ace king there and make me fold equity. Good for you. You know, most of the time you're just gonna have pocket aces or pocket kings and fuck you. Uh, so yeah, I'm, I've been doing some old folding, not loads as you can see by my stats. You know, um, we're still getting to the river like 29 percent of the time. Uh, so it's not we're criminally overfolding. We're just I'm just been overfolding to the people who I think are the people we just do better overfolding against than we do like giving action to. Um, so as we can see by my graph, it's gone really well. Um, you're going to be disgusted by the red lines, and the thing is, the red line is just a joke. It's a complete joke. But the blue line is fucking gorgeous. And um, I just decided this month I was going to be all a black blue line. I wasn't going to waste blue line on, on like hopeless bluffs against you know like weak tight calling stations. I wasn't going to torch blue line by making ambitious call downs against fucking weak type under bluffers and it's gone really well um it's it's a bit boring sometimes it's it's it can be frustrating and it can make you feel like you know I'm, what game am i fucking playing here when i'm folding like pretty good bluff catches but it, it can be the, it can be one of the best bluff catches going if your opponent is way under bluffing and let's face it in these games people do way under bluff then Generally, overfolding is going to be a reasonable fucking adjustment, unless you have like a very good reason to yeah, to call the bluff. Um, it's not the sort of thing anyone wants to fucking hear. It's not the sort of thing anyone really wants to talk about because everyone wants to be like, oh, you know, they want to look really clever. Oh, I'm calling this river because I, you know, I block, you know, certain combos that that villain can have. So therefore, I just need to call it. Fuck off! It's bullshit. It's utter bullshit. It's, we're playing twenty five and L. We're playing fifty and L. People are not finding anywhere near the correct number of bluffs, especially on rivers, um, to even to warrant even considering calling with most bluff catchers. If we just fold every bluff catcher we ever have in these games against the vast majority of opponents, unless we have a fucking good reason or we have good data to suggest that our opponents are bluffing, if we just overfold enormously versus all these enormous nits, then... Um, we're just going to have a happier time at the end of the month. We're just going to have more money. We're just going to have better win rates. Um, so, yeah, there's going to be a couple of folds in there that I no doubt I'm going to get some some criticism for. And fine, you know, by all means, post your thoughts in the chat. Uh, tell me why the folds are really, really bad. Um, I'd be interested to read them, but I'm not going to give a fuck because, you know, you don't make a lot of money in these poker, in poker games by paying off people with who VP 18%. You just don't do it. If someone's VP 18%, you don't make money from paying them off. Fine, they're going to get the occasional bluff through you, but the vast majority of the time, they're just going to fucking have whatever it is that's beating your hand. They're just going to have it the vast majority of the time. And just fuck them. They don't deserve action. If you're playing 25, 22 with a 9% 3 bit, you deserve action. You know, you, you, yeah, you're playing decent, strong poker. You deserve action. You're going to get some. You're playing 18, 14 with a 3.5% 3 bet and a 20% river aggression frequency. You don't deserve any action and you ain't getting it from me. Uh, and that's a big part of the reason why I believe we've had such a good month. Um, when we put the rate back and bonuses on, we're up nearly $1,200 in a month. It's quite remarkable, really, given the stakes that I play. And, um, yeah, really happy with it. And, um, yeah, if this has come across at the end as a little bit arrogant or a little bit whatever, um, it's not meant to be. Uh, I'm just, like, I'm just so convinced of my strategy right now. Um, theoretically, pre-flop, I think I'm playing pretty well. Um, Post-flop, I'm not playing remotely well theoretically, but in practice, it's working really well. And I'm really happy with where my game is, really happy with my population reads and... Um, yeah, really happy going forward for the next few months. I'm really confident that I mean, we, we might not continue having $1,000 months. At some point, some negative variance is going to hit. But I'm so happy with my game right now, so happy with my, my mental state. Um, yeah, really, really pleased. 
There won't be a video tomorrow, everybody, I'm afraid. And we're probably going to be going into next week, Monday, Tuesday, before we do any more. And even then, as we said at the start of the video, it's only likely to be if I'm awake early enough in the day to put a session in and pools are running. So um, videos might be sporadic, but I will try my best to make at least two videos next week between Monday and Thursday. We're going to leave it there for now, though, everybody. Uh, thanks for watching. Any questions, please comment below. Um, or any comments, please leave them below. If you haven't hit like yet, please hit the like button. Uh, if you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. And as always, fuck the Tories. We'll leave it there, everyone. Take care and bye-bye for now.